I'm Sona Kim, America's Face of Dating, and today I have a very unique topic on my phone here. So I got this PDF file sent to me by one of my business partners, and on this PDF file are several banned techniques from the pickup artist community. And they banned these techniques because they claimed that they were so powerful that they were causing people to fall in love very, very easy in 15 minutes. One of them says that it ruined somebody's lives. Another one, there's a legend on here that says some man fell so deeply in love with a woman after she used one of these techniques I'm about to share with you on him. She fell in love, he fell in love so deep that he lopped off one of his own testicles to show her how much he loved her. And so on that note, to say viewer discretion is advised because these are very powerful apparently. If you're not familiar with the pickup artist world, I'm gonna go into a little description on what a technique and a routine really is. Basically, they are scripts that these pickup artists would have in their head, and they would pull these scripts out midway through the conversation with the woman, and on this, on this script are steps. And what the steps really are are what you say when she says this, what you do when she does this, and you go down this list, and you're basically running her through this script, at the very end of the script, she's supposed to be, according to the routine, more attached to you, more obsessed with you, in love with you, or wants to go home and sleep with you. When I was involved in the club promoting world, we basically had to take the hot girls, this was our strategy, basically get hot girls into the club, because if you get hot girls into the club, then guys are going to want to go into that club, because guys usually go out for one reason, and what's that? Usually to score. So. We, had, we were trained by some pickup artists to make these models, cheerleaders, actresses fall in love with us so that we can bring them and their hot friends into the club because once we brought them into the club, then these guys are going to follow into that club and literally leave other clubs to go into the club that we're at. So I remember one of my strategies was that I would get this girl to fall in love with me who was very, very stunning, just eye candy to most men. And usually hot girls have a stream of hot friends. And so if I made one girl fall in love with me, then all of them were going to want, to want to be with me. And so basically, and of course when you tell them free alcohol, free VIP, their eyes are lighting up like a fucking gambling machine in Vegas when the cherries line up. And so <laughs> we would I would take these girls, this is, this is wild. So I would take these girls, I would walk them down the streets, down the sidewalks, outside of the club that we're at, Literally walk them back and forth like a block, block down, block back, block down, block back, and literally on the stripper club. So these guys would accumulate behind us like wax, like they're zombies, like, uh, like following us for these hot girls. And literally I'd bring them, then once we had enough guys that literally noticed us, I'd go back into the club that we were at and made sure that all of them noticed and literally pack the house with guys. And it was wild. And I used a lot of these techniques to make these girls fall in love so I can make more money myself. And so let's go into the first technique, the first band technique that I want to share with you. So the first band technique is called fractionation. And if you're, if you're wondering what the fortune is on my phone, it says you will achieve your goals. And so I get a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, what does the fortune say on your phone? I can't read it from the camera angle. And it says you will achieve your goals because I think it's important for people to have little tokens like a coin or a fortune laying around and it should be a stem of good emotion. And so whenever you look at it, you get, you remember that emotion that you planted with it. For example, this fortune, whenever I go on my phone, I want to make sure that I'm always doing something towards my goals instead of getting distracted with something else. And so I'll see the fortune and be like, oh yes, make sure that if you're on your phone, you're doing something that's working towards your goals. And so you should always have something, a little token that is a little reminder to you of some emotion or some inspiration for you to keep moving but back to our back to our regular scheduled programming here anyways a little side note it says that this one under fractionation is called the october man sequence and the legend behind this one says that the inventor of this technique has claimed to be able to make a woman want to go to bed with them upon as little as 15 minutes after using this technique which i read through it and i was like this one seems like it could be that good, but I'm like, it sounds a little bit fucking bullshit to me. So you can decide what it really is, but uh, and you can try it yourself if you really want to. But it says the foundation of fractionation 
is positive negative theory. This is where you talk about things which are pleasurable, positive, and then you immediately followed by things which are painful, negative. So here's an example. Do you remember the time when your best friend is just next to you and it makes you feel tremendously happy? You feel important, appreciated, and loved. Can you imagine how that feels? Pause. I used to, but then one day my best friend got sick and she died almost immediately after she got warded to the hospital. Pause. She was gone. It's a little fucked. A slightly more advanced variation is combining positive-negative with a plethora of NLP techniques, astral projection, cold reading, and anchoring. Here's one example. And Oh yeah, like anchoring and NLP is actually very, very powerful. I actually talk about that in my book. NLP is, is extremely powerful. Like It will work. Have you ever met a person who you feel that he is meant to be with you? Point to yourself subtly. This is what anchoring is in NLP. So even if you've only met him for five minutes, you knew deep down inside that he will be an important part of your life, whether, that has, whether that's a partner or only a friend. Pause. I've experienced that myself. I've met someone who I very, grew very close with to very quickly, but only a few days later, she got into a horrible car accident and she was gone. <laughs> These are like fucked examples, dude. I'm not going to lie. In the above example, it says the act of subtly pointing to yourself is the anchor. Exactly. So when you point to yourself, when you're talking about like, when you're talking to a woman and you say, have you ever met a person who you feel he is meant to be with you forever and you point to yourself, then what this really is in NLP is that you point to yourself because you're subtly implying yourself and then you point away, usually like you do this because anchoring it away when, when you talk about people that are like usually annoying or needy or clingy or you're not meant to be with somebody else and you know those feelings, right? So you point away. And so you're anchoring that emotion with her whenever you point to yourself when you're in this conversation and she starts to feel those feelings for you. It's very, very interesting psychologically what this actually does to people. It says another way to anchor is to look deep into her eyes when you talk about the positive things and look away when talking about the negative things. This way, by looking away later, you will elicit pain from her. Exactly what you need to get a high degree of compliance. Once you, have brought, once you have brought her through the emotional roller coaster, through alternating cycles of pain and pleasure, it's time to escalate physically. And here's how to do it. Ask her, inside every woman, there is a natural woman who is yearning to get out from the social barriers and conditions. If you can, use, if you can be this natural woman without any social inhabitants, what would you do? Ask her where this natural woman is in her body, and whatever that is, touch her there, and then escalate. <laughs> this technique is not just theory. It has been field tested many, many times and has never failed to get me laid. Go on and go on out and try it, it says. So uh, it's very, very interesting. You know, if I was going to rate this one on a, te on a scale of 1 through 10 on most likely effectiveness, I would probably say that, well, according to the legends, it'll have a woman wanting to sleep with you in 15 minutes. I'd say like this one's like an eight out of ten. Like it, it definitely works just because NLP is so damn powerful. Literally, um, another trick with NLP before I go into the next tech technique is when you give a woman, for example, if you give a woman a, a great, great time during a night, and then let's say you take off your necklace or give her like you know a little swizzle stick. And you say, keep this until the next time we, we see each other. She's going to keep that. And whenever she pulls it out, she's going to be remembering those great emotions that she experienced with you. So whenever she pulls a great example is a hoodie too. If you go on a date with a woman and give her a fucking amazing time, then you give her a hoodie. And if she wears that hoodie to sleep, then she's going to wake up in the morning wearing it, smelling like you. And she's going to remember you. And she's going to remember, she's going to associate all those good emotions with you, which is gonna make her think about you and then contact you way quicker. So the second wow. band technique from the community that I have here is known as the boyfriend destroyer sequence. And this one I actually know personally works because I had to use this one multiple on multiple occasions in the club promoting industry. So chapter five, part nine, when I was going on my interview with the New York Weekly for my book, uh, I, they said, give us a snippet of your book and let us read it and we're going to see if we want to like bring you on for an interview. And so I, I gave them that chapter, chapter five, part nine, Puppet Master. And when they read that, they were like, holy shit. They're like, this is insane. Like we have to bring you on. And so they're literally, they went from like, eh, like we'll maybe bring you on to like, we have to have you on the show to talk about this. And so when I went on and that's really what got my book attention was that chapter five, part nine, because what happens in that part is that 
I had to, in the club promoting world, but to get accepted into that community, you had to go through a series of tryouts to be a club promoter. And what these tryouts were, were that they put you in certain social situations, most likely in the club, and you had to do some mission. And if you failed to do the mission, then you were officially out. Some of these tryouts included some really fucked up things. For example, one of them included for uh, one of my partners, he had to get two girls in the club and to have a three with him that night. And, <laughs> and if you fail to pass these tryouts, then you basically are not going to be a club promoter. You basically get struck out and you, and you never come back. You're basically banned. But mine was I had to go to this club and they had watchers there. And some of these watchers, they would, they would see, uh, they would scout out who was really in the club. And there was this, this sparkling platinum blonde. And the only problem was that she had a boyfriend. And the bigger problem that I talk about in chapter five, part nine of my book, was that this boyfriend is not just a typical guy. He was, I believe he was a linebacker that was about to sign with the Indianapolis Colts. And I literally had to not only take her home, but I had to literally take her away from him. And luckily I knew the sequence and it worked because I got her away from him, but it wasn't what you think. What this technique is, Let's go through it. it. says, boyfriend destroyer techniques hinge on the principle that every partner has got imperfections. And by amplifying these imperfections, you will create doubt in her mind if her boyfriend is her ideal partner at all. The biggest mistake that one can make is try to convince a woman logically that he is better than her existing boyfriend. Don't do that. And that is so true. Like, that is, that is very true. Because if you try to convince a woman, for example, if she has a boyfriend, you're just like, oh, like, I'm better. She's kind of like, this guy is just a fucking weak bitch. This guy's insecure. He's trying to steal me away. Instead, you have to make her feel something. And that's what they really describe in the rest of this. So it says, instead, imply or plant in her mind that you are the superior man by following this sequence. Number one, find out the faults of her boyfriend. Number two, amplify the faults using the techniques below. Number three, imply that you're the better choice as you do not have that particular fault. The examples are common fault, being boring, amplification, He's being too comfortable with you, and that's why he's not particularly adventurous with you anymore. Does he feel more like a brother to you now? With me, I know things get predictable after a while, but I like to keep things spicy in a relationship. <laughs> Pretty good one. So it's basically saying that the boyfriend's boring, I'm not boring, like I love to do adventurous things. She's going to be like, oh my gosh, like I want adventure. And then basically what this technique does is you, you basically, you're talking to this girl, and you try to find out all of the imperfections of the man. And once you find one, you basically stab at it and you make it so big in her brain that whenever she looks at him, all she sees is that imperfection and it makes her want you even more. Because women want what they do not have. And people want what they do not have or cannot have. And so if she's like, okay, like he's never going to give me adventure, but this guy will, then she's going to want you. And then she's going to start to test this other man more. It's a very, very messed up sequence. And... I can see why it's banned because it actually, it works very, very well. It's very, very lethal. A common fault, being needy. Amplification. I wouldn't blame him, really. You're probably the only thing that is going on for him in his life. And you have, you have to remember that he needs you to feel important. That, she's going to be like, God, is he, is my boyfriend really that fucking weak? Like, I need to dump him tonight, right? It's super messed up. Another one says, common fault, being abusive. Amplification. This happens when the man is not able to control himself emotionally. He can't control the things that are happening inside his head, and so it all comes out in a physical manner. He is trying. To, he is probably trying to make you stay with him desperately, knowing that he won't be able to get another woman. And a woman, when a woman hears that, she's like, "I need to leave this guy like right now," because you're basically taking that fault about him and expanding it so big that whenever she goes back to him that night, she's literally gonna just look at him and see that fault, and it's gonna be just eating at her. It's, it's really, it's really lethal, and uh, I don't recommend doing this, because <laughs> it works, it really works, and it's really, really bad. There's a list of common faults on here, I'll give one more, it says, being predictable at sex, amplification, he wants to make you happy, but he's worried that he cannot please you, so he never strays from the beaten path, he probably will do better soon, especially when he gets over his self-esteem issues. <laughs> So these are very, very powerful techniques. And like I said, uh, before I move on to the last technique that I'm going to share with you today, he, 
these techniques are very, very powerful. And the one that I had to use in that club basically for the Colts player or the person I was about to sign to the Colts was that I had to get this guy away from her. And once I got that, it's a whole strategy in my book. I'm not going to go into it right now, but I got this guy away from her and I talked to her one-on-one -on -one and I found out that this guy, I found out that the Colts player basically, I found out, it was on here somewhere, that he was, oh yeah, the Colts player, he was very, very needy. And you're probably like, God, like he's an NFL player. Like he has everything. And it's like, you know, there's a fault with everybody. Everyone has some sort of weakness. And once you find it, this technique is that you take it and you expand it so big that all she can see is that. I remember that his was being needy. And once I found it, I literally just expanded on it so big that I was about to walk away from her. I said, you know what? Like, you have a great night. And she grabbed my hand and she was like, okay, like, let's go. And so we left together. This third technique wow. is actually very, very simple. It's only a couple of sentences. It's called Strawberry Fields. And there's more on this list, but I'm actually running out of time. I have to do another interview today with the LA Wire and so I have to run. It says, this is a routine which is designed for physical escalation recommended only when you have developed sufficient rapport with the girl. A good state transition device from comfort to sex. Legend says that this technique has made people fall in love in 30 minutes, has made, has made a man lop off his own testicle just to give it to the woman that he claimed he fell in love with. <laughs> and so apparently this technique has ruined lives. And that's what the legend says. And so we're going to see if it's as good as people are claiming it to be. Basically, you're, you're telling this to a woman. This is routine and this is, this is what you're saying to her midway through conversation. You're just like, hey, like, let's try this routine out. And I heard, it, I heard it today. It's really, really cool. And it says it's supposed to do this to you. And so let's see if it does it to you. I have to try it on somebody. And so... After you do that, you say, you just run right into it, right? You're like, imagine that you are now standing at the gates of a strawberry field. You are alone. There are tasty, ripe strawberries in the field. Can you see the strawberries? She says, yes. So she has her eyes closed. She's imagining. I can see it right now. Just green plants, red, ruby red strawberries shining. You then say, how high are the gates surrounding the field? It says that this indicates how easy or hard the girl is to give sex. So that's what the question means. And so let's say that she says the gates are like six feet tall. So very, very tall gates. You then say, imagine you're now inside the strawberry field. How many strawberries would you pick and eat? She says the number. This indicates the number of sex partners that she desires. And so let's say two. She says two. It says, then after you finish eating the strawberries, you realize that you have been observed by the farmer from afar. How do you feel about him? This indicates how she feels about her partner after sex. And so this could mean that, let's say that she says, oh, I see this, I see this farmer. He's very buff. He's very built. Uh, he has a jawline. He's sexy. Uh, his name's Selma Kim. And uh, she like desires him, right? And so after she says that, <laughs> You then take her through the sequence. So she imagines the strawberries and then you say, how high are the gates around in the field? And this is supposed to indicate how easy or hard the girls to have sex. So she says six feet, let's say. And usually that would mean like, oh, like she's probably pretty difficult to sleep with or get into bed. Imagine now that you're in the strawberry field, how many strawberries would you pick and eat? This indicates the number of sex partners that she desires. So let's say she said two and she desires two sex partners. And she'll probably argue that and be like, oh my God, no, I don't. Like if a girl has a higher number, you could probably tease and banter with her and be like, oh my gosh, like I fucking knew it. You're one of those type of girls. She'll be like, no, I'm not. And then it says the observation of the farmer and this indicates how she feels about her partner after sex and so she describes him to be like oh like really fucking sexy then after she has sex with a partner then she tends to fall probably more in love with that partner uh, i actually really want to try this one out so i would probably rate this one i haven't tried it but i'd probably rate this one it's pretty simple pretty easy i don't know if it caused somebody to lop off their own testicle to me it sounds like a little bit phony just to hype this routine up i'd probably rate this one an eight out of ten <laughs> and so people are probably listen to this like what that deserves like a nine or like that deserves like a five it sucks who knows but 
I think this one would be a really good conversation starter to have with a woman midway through conversations. Very fun. And most women have never been taken through sequences like this, but again, I mean, it's still pretty cool, pretty good, and I can totally see this working. So use it at your own discretion. If you're seeking help with attraction, dating, personal life, business life, relationships, then make sure that you jump into my book, Waking the Core of Man, where I discuss hundreds of techniques like the ones I just share with you about how to win the heart of the woman of your dreams. If you need to get a hold of me fast, then make sure that you go to my website and book a paid coaching session with yours truly. On that note, I'm Sonic Kim, America's Face of Dating, and make sure you use those techniques I just shared with you with discretion. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>